Well, again, we funded Edge of Nowhere from the beginning. So this is a, an example of where we've gone to a developer and, and said, hey, would you be interested in putting a team together that will fund from the very beginning to focus on VR? Because while there isn't a big market established yet, it's going to be, it's coming, but while it's not here yet, this is a big um, risk for a number of developers to take that's hard for them to fully justify. A number of developers are doing it, which is awesome, and we love to support them too, and we have a whole publishing group to support them, but for some of the developers that aren't able to t fully take that leap without assistance, we're out there funding or supporting them every step of the way to make a great made-for-VR game. When it comes to great VR games, what are things that you're noticing? Like people in the past have said first person shooters are still challenging in VR, uh, that racing games and uh, dogfighting games work extremely well. What are, what are you noticing from, from seeing early versions of different development VR games? We're seeing a number of different genres work that we didn't even expect to work. We really didn't know. Right in the very beginning of Oculus, when we launched our Kickstarter three years ago, we really thought it was going to be running around hallways in first person, you know, blowing stuff up and having fun in games that we were familiar with on a 2D monitor. And as it turns out, uh, there's a lot of different um, mechanics that are involved, and there are a lot of challenges that made that not necessarily the ideal experience and made other experiences a lot more compelling. And so we're starting to see this incredible collection of different games that we never expected that are really super fun to play. Lucky's Tale is a platformer where you look down as kind of God's eye third person view and actually the world does move and I'm one of the most sensitive in the company and I didn't expect that to actually work. In fact when we sat down and talked to Playful and it's another group that we really helped fund right from the beginning um, we talked about you know, what would be the right mechanic for Lucky's Tail and would the world move? And I was super nervous about it saying, oh, don't, please don't move the world. I want to be able to play this game. I'm so excited about it, but I'm really worried of, about, you know, the comfort level. And I just finished one of the first set of levels for two and a half hours straight and felt great. And I'm one of the most sensitive. So it's totally possible to unlock all these different experiences. And that was a game built around the game pad that will ship uh, with Oculus Rift. Now we're, we're obviously focusing on video games here at E3, but at Sundance you guys did announce and we've seen Oculus Studios put out some, some content. What role do you feel they'll play in the VR space moving forward, non-interactive non entertainment? So we're f totally focused on gaming and entertainment. And we look at this made in 3D, made in a 3D game engine set of cinema as somewhat of an extension and kind of just slight expansion to gaming. Um, in a way, it's almost like a subset because the game has to have all this interactivity and that Inter that cinema experience is a lot less interactive or almost not interactive. It's just kind of this visual experience. So we see it as a definite extension, something that we want to support right from the beginning. They're really rich, uh, compelling experiences. We set up Oculus Story Studio, actually a, a first party internal team, where instead of having just funding an external team, we really brought them totally into the fold. And it's a small team, about a dozen or two folks that are building these experiences from scratch and trying to figure out what is it like to be immersed, to actually be in the movie and to be in somewhat of a Pixar CG rendered experience because this isn't live action. This is all still running actually in a 3D game engine. So as much as people say, oh, but that's not gaming, that's cinema. It's like actually it's still a game running in real time. It's, and it's still using, uh, right now, everything's been using the Unreal Engine running in real time for that Oculus Story Studio content. Um, it's just non-interactive or just slightly interactive. So it may even have a little bit of interactivity and be like this halfway between a game and a passive movie experience, um, but it's super compelling. And so we showed uh, the first experience at uh, Sundance, and now we've announced the second experience, H Henry, um, which is gonna be very, very fun and it's going to be a little more cartoony, something I'm excited to see and laugh at. Uh, so we'll have to see as they evolve. And we set that studio up to really educate the whole community. That was the goal, it was to educate and inspire. So we're going to share everything that we create um, at Story Studio. We're going to share with the community.